Thompson. Always a pleasure having you on AM News. Okay, the same. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you so much. Can you tell us more about the anniversary of the signing of the first International Telegraph Convention and the creation of the International Communication Union? It was 150 years ago when this was signed. And at that time, in terms of communication, really, people were thinking of a telegraph. You know the usual things where we come from, sending a letters, the fastest was the telegraph. But you know, when you reflect, even coming back to us as South Africa, we've come a long way. Now, if I have to send you a message, it's a minute, just like this. So we, we usually use the 17th of May, the world at large, the telecommunications family to say, how far have we gone? Where are challenges? And of course, Everybody is concerned about our most remote uh, rural areas, especially in developing countries. And in terms of technology, uh, people are innovating, looking at alternatives to the traditional broadband, like wireless, so that even in the most difficult areas, like the school, the farm school we're, we're at, at Van der Bale Park, where there's almost nothing, even the social infrastructure, the road to a school, not far from Sasol, not far from our fancy highways. It's a question of saying, how do we ensure that a child there, 150 years after telecommunications was launched, they are also connected. And that's why we went there. And Deputy Minister, I understand that you launched a computer laboratory at the same school, the Radibu um, Primary Farm School. Please tell me more about that. This school is interesting. I was with the mayor. You know, the mayor was reflecting, saying, this school was initiated by farmers, as usual, like a, as you will see in places like in the area of Foways, the Vetkopen. Traditionally, they will say they need a school for uh, farm children to be able at least to read the instructions or to be able to communicate with them with no vision. It remains a primary school. Infrastructure is poor. You know, security is a big issue. Uh, some of the people who were there, especially the media, they were raising issues of security to say, now you are going to leave these computers. What's going to happen? Yes. As Centec, when we visited, they came with a special uh, uh, cupboard where you secure them, lock them away, which is a big hassle. It means, as we expect these children, instead of playing outside with Cent they should come back and, and work. Mm. It's an effort, they have to be un, to unlock the cupboard and bring them back. So it's a, it's a very poor school. But what was good, parents, half their room, had pa parents had attended in big numbers, mm. sitting side by side with their children. Uh, the high levels of commitment. But you know, thinking about the World Telecommunications Day, mm. I was looking at that child there, struggling, afraid even to to work on the computer mm. and thinking of um, a well-resourced child, the two-year-olds, yeah. you know, who will take this and start clicking and knows which button to go to. Mm. And so you could see that we have to move a little bit faster Absolutely. in finding alternative technologies mm. to make sure that those people are included. Mm. Because remember, te uh, these telecommunication technologies are not really for its own sake. It's an economic inclusion agenda, mm -hmm. basically. Whether you are young or old, educated, you have to access critical skills for the future, but also even for elderly people. You know, if you look at where government is going, prioritizing e-government as a priority, then how do they access those services yeah. that are supposed to be accessed electronically if we do not invest in them? So it's a big day for us. Mm -hmm. Our challenges are clear. We don't want to clear um, easy victories, mm -hmm. but we are grateful that the private sector has moved ahead in urban area, areas were covered. Some people are already at a fast speed at 4G. Mm. And, and so we, we, we will be starting as soon as possible to the most deserving uh, districts in the country. And, and Deputy Minister, I mean, the, the city of Twani has been very progressive as far as connectivity is concerned, ensuring that the city has Wi-Fi, or at least at, you know, different hotspots. But what are some of those challenges that make it not so easy for other cities, not just in Gauteng, but, you know, around the country to ensure that, you know, children, the elderly, you know, average South Africans are well connected? You see, this sector has gro grown 
uh, being driven by the private sector, where their businesses are. They will make sure that they are connected because they are multinationals, the other companies in Japan, the other one is in Asia, Brazil, and so on. So, Tswane, Egurulen, you know, how dang is at an advantageous position? Because there will be broadband, which in some instances was uh, put by the private sector for their own interest. But what we are saying as government now, come the 1st of June, our priority is to go to the districts that the president spoke about. And we want to partner in the spirit of the NDP with the private sector, starting in rural areas as, as part of their service obligations. Because it doesn't help them either if they have a market that they've grown when they leave out a huge percentage mm -hmm. of people who could be adding value, like our youth in terms of innovation and creativity in terms of what they can, the value they can add in this industry, we're missing out. Yeah, and it's leading to the ratings. That's another thing I was thinking <laughs> about. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and just before we let you go, because unfortunately we've run out of time, but any future plans that you would like to also share uh, from the telecommunications department? Well, really, as we move forward, we are investing time and resources on young people, ensuring that they acquire critical skills, even if they don't have a, a, a BSc in computer science, but in partnership with the industry, to be able to be suppliers. I was in Devon last night. One um, business person was saying their, can, their company will be training women, young women, particularly to install a uh, set top boxes as soon as possible, as soon as we clear the policy. So there are moves of inclusion. That's the most important thing, digital inclusion, because it's critical Absolutely. for our economic transformation. Absolutely. Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services, Professor Lingum Kiza, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Too. Thank you so much. Well, that was the Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services, Honourable Professor Klingi Wim Kiza, talking to us about the department's schools connectivity project. But we'll leave on news that that while sports is coming up next, but shortly after this break.